You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Keith. Johnson. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Smash After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's Smash After Show. Hey everybody, Bing is for doing, and we are doing another episode of Smash. I am Tamara Berg. I am joined in studio by John Comerford. Hello everyone. Kendra Cabasal. Hello everyone. Sarah Mendoza. Good evening. We have Stephen Lemieux helping us out in the booth. How's it going, guys? Kristen Carroll cannot be with us tonight, and so we are going to try and fill her space with all of our fabulousness and see if we can uh, talk a little smash talk. That's Megan Hilty singing right now. This is her new album that I believe dropped this week. And, uh, this Available is one of the March 12th. Oh, next week. Okay. Nice. March 12th. Thank you, Stephen. Um, so that's one of the tracks that's out in the world. So is it it's a different album, sound for her. It's her. Smash it's album. her album. Separate it's her album. Smash. Separate from Smash. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So look for that one. Um, I just listened yeah. to this tune and and read a review on it and. Uh, I, I think it sounds pretty good. Well, you're the one that asked you to be put out here. Yeah, I am, actually, yeah, so there we go. Okay, people, let's get into this episode. Let's start off with talking about uh, Sean Hayes, who joined the show this week. He's doing three episodes, I think, that we know about. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And came on being his typical wacky self, okay. doing... Uh, apart from Dangerous Liaisons, which is a drama slash tragedy, according to Ivy. Yes, well, according to most people. Well, yeah, yeah, but I mean, as she spoke yeah. about it. As it was intended to be. Right. <laughs> and clearly not getting it at all. Uh, he, you know, I, I, I sort of agree with uh, what somebody was saying. I think he, his character was saying, why are they putting me on the show if they think I can't, you know, if, I, if they know I'm a comedian? Yeah. Well, they obviously wanted his name recognition. Right. So yes. They, they need to put butts in the seats. Right. And Everybody so. else was busy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. <laughs> They're going to do what sells. It's like when they booked uh, who, whoever Uma Thurman right. yeah. played the big movie star in right. the first season. This was their way right. of getting a big star that's already known to fill the seats. But... Talk about ca casting against type. He doesn't look like a leading man. He <laughs> is obviously a crazy character actor yeah. in this. Did they say, I, I must have missed it if they did, um, was he coming from TV? Was his character coming from film. TV? Or did they just, oh, he was a film actor. I, I remember okay. remember yeah. saying film. Um, it was film, I think, yeah. yeah. Well, they blew it on that one. So <laughs> Ivy tells him that he is uh, getting it all wrong. And he keeps trying to push it that he's got it. Yeah. He's got it right. It's going to be a comedy. We're going to get the funny out of this show. In every line. And then um, she she helps him with a little bit of insight that encourages him to <laughs> go off his meds. Go off his meds. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just clearly going to be fantastic I, comedy right there. I yeah. think or it's drama. hilarious that, you know, it's not some, like, deep-rooted issue why he can't yeah. connect with feelings. It's just the fact that he's been on, like, lithium and whatever <laughs> mm -hmm. other medicine Adderall, he's had. For Adderall. 20 years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> For 20 years. That's prevented him to feel anything. He's just, like, on a constant high. Which makes him a great comedian, but obviously it's not fitting for the play that he's supposed to, or a musical he's supposed to be doing. Right. I think it's going to, you know, create some uh, excellent train wreck drama that we will not be able to look away from. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm sure we're going to get some silliness. <laughs> and there may be, I'm just going to go out with a prediction right here in the first segment, uh, he may be on a ledge literally at some yeah, point yeah, exactly. before the end of the three episodes. It's fine when he's on the manic yeah. side. But 
if he's on the depressive side, this is going to be horrible. Ooh, and Ivy's going to have to talk him down from whatever ledge he's going to be yeah. on. She's going to rue the day. She oh, no, go back. Here's the best. Take your bets. Do we yeah. predict romance between them or like mm. at least a hookup or something? I predict she's going to try to sneak meds back into his right? drink. Right, exactly. She's going to slip him something, Cocktail. try to get him back on his <laughs> give him Right, give him a little lithium something, in his coffee exactly. in the morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Decaf coffee. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I did like, though, what he said when, when she first approached him and said, you know, I, I, I'm, this is a little awkward, but I want to let you know that this is, I, I think you're not getting the tone. And he said, I think you're very brave yeah. to tell me that. I think they did a, a nice little, uh, um, you know, reveals the whole time, you know, th there's the fact that she was so worried about saying something, how could this be happening? And mm -hmm. oh, finally, and I'm in a hit musical and it's right. going to be sunk by this guy. Are you mm -hmm. kidding me? Because a bunch of clowns and uh, right. what, what, uh, people who are just afraid to say anything. And, uh, yeah. Right. And, I, you know, when he, when, she's, when he said, you know, you're really brave to say something, I go, I really bought that. I was like, oh, wow, this could be, could see a whole new thing coming out of him. Uh -huh. Yeah, I liked that. Yeah. It was but, also almost a, do you know who I am? State right. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I, she didn't know how to take it, I think. I thought it was funny because he was like, a tragedy? How challenging. Yeah. So he took it as another, like, exactly. serious part of his career. Yeah. Like, yeah. wow, they think I'm so good that I can now tackle this new part of yeah. my career where right. I am a serious Broadway actor. I think my favorite line from him is, feel it. <laughs> oh, that was <laughs> He's an actor. <laughs> feel it. <laughs> yeah. They just, like, it suddenly dawned on him. Oh. Oh, I see. And interesting that the one line that, that they were, or the part of the scene that they were talking about when he actually responded, he was talking about pantomime. Yeah. Which you know something about, right? Sure, yeah. it, Can you tell us a little bit about what that is in, in theater? Well, in, well, it's from England, uh, pantomimes. They, they're they That's right. very broad and lots of fun, and everybody does them. I mean, you know, this, you kind of grow up with them, and every, especially every Christmas you see them and all that kind of stuff, so they're very, very, very broad, so... Could you define that for those who are listening who don't know, you what, know what pantomime is? Pantomime is. Oh. Well, if, it's in, a in form the, of theater. Yeah, and a form, form of theater of that he's talking about is it's it's very broad comedies. That's uh. what he's. It's not pantomime that we would think of in terms of mm. miming or any of that kind of stuff. No, it's pantomimes. So, gotcha. So that's where he's going. A, a commedia dell'arte in the Italian. Yeah, that's in that uh, form. Version. It's that kind of. Yeah, thing. but it's the okay. British form of that. Right. Uh. So. Okay. So anyway, interesting that they were actually talking about it. In, in a drama, and that yeah. was actually what he was doing, uh, the sort of form that he was going for when yeah. he was doing it. Even. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I was wondering if Sean was going to interact with uh, Deborah Messing. At all, yeah. Because yeah. It doesn't yeah. look like those storylines are going to meet. Well, it's going to be very interesting if they do, because they're going to have to go from the two different musicals to yeah. diverge. I don't know how that's going to yeah, go. Yeah, it's probably but. not going to happen yeah. by the looks of it. But I, I feel like the fans, who were at least Will and Grace fans before, yes. were waiting for that uh, reunion <laughs> on set or for this show, mm -hmm. just that to see how different it would be. They'll probably say, you look familiar or something. Right, they'll pass <laughs> on the street or yeah. something. Yeah. <laughs> they'll make it a little That'd comedic moment. Yeah, Absolutely. I bet. That would be I good. Prediction. Yeah, so I mean, I thought it was great that Sean Hayes was on tonight, and we're going to see a little bit more of him in the next yes. couple episodes. We want to know what the viewers think out there, too. And mm -hmm. um, you can actually go onto iTunes. Uh, for our Smash podcast, rate and comment. Uh, tell us what you think. Do you, did you think he was great tonight on the episode? Do you want him to interact with Deborah Messing? Mm -hmm. uh, do you think that the Broadway musical that I and him are working on should be a comedy? Or should yeah, they go the exactly more... Exactly, dangerous thing ever. <laughs> right. <laughs> <As a comedy. laughs> Which Never way do you want to see it? Right. Uh, so yeah, rate and comment. We love hearing what you have to say. We, uh, we often bring up what you guys say on our show. Um, so, you know, tell a friend. It, it helps us get a gauge on what you're interested in talking, that, uh, what you're interested in hearing from us, right. what we want to talk about on the show. And it really helps us out here when people do rate and comment. Um, it just helps us out here at AfterBuzz. I've got a couple of comments that people have made. Erin uh, Conlon said that she missed Sam as Aww. well as we do, you know, yeah. our good friend Sam. We got <laughs> to interview him uh, last, last season, mm -hmm. and he's, I think he's going to come back and interview, let us interview him again yes. this season. Um, but he, she said um, that she missed Sam and the other chorus kids because they provided a more grounded and snarkily truthful view yeah. of what I feel like we've been missing for the last couple of episodes. We kind of talked about that last week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And another, um, another um, 
fan Anna Carreno said she loved how Derek got a bit hurt and jealous when Karen forgot about him. Um, he says, I hope that Derek, she says, I hope that Derek fights for Karen and maybe they'll get together down the road. I love their chemistry. Mm. So that's kind of an interesting That's interesting. Comment. So yeah, let us know what you think. I want to talk about, I think the most, the sort of the meat of this episode and really the drama of it came from the storyline of Julia and Peter right. and Tom. Yeah, I agree. Um, so it started off with Julia, you know, apparently taking her meds, you know, coming into <laughs> the theater, being very excited mm -hmm. about the about the fact that they've got this great draft and right. they're and they're ready to go. Peter Peter um, supporting her with that. And Tom right from the get go is skeptical. Of course. Right? Yeah. Because he's being left out. Not only right? that, but you know, I, I, you know, who knows? I mean, it kind of almost played to me like he kind of knew that something was up about that first draft that he had sent yeah. out and stuff mm. and yeah, and I, you know, I don't know how much of you know. He's obviously, uh, you know, a little bit jealous that he's out mm -hmm. and you know Peter's in and she's doing so well. Right. right. Yeah. Well, if, if I were Tom, I would have been um, skeptical too. Um, you know, after finding out that Peter lied about being at the show, mm -hmm. the, right. the first run. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, why would you lie about that? That's a red flag, and that would be a red flag in my mind. Yes. As to his intentions. Yes. And then um, the run-in on the street yeah. with um, the. Uh, this is actually a cameo. John Robin Bates, who is a was a writer writer for Brothers and Sisters, mm -hmm. and um, I think he's written. He, yeah, he's written books and plays. Uh, a piece called Other Desert Cities and things like that. So he's the guy who ran in on, on the, the street, street. Yeah. told him about told Julie about mm -hmm. Peter about mm -hmm. right. And yeah, even using the exact same words, I was like, okay, what? The exact same wording? Right. 100% behind mm -hmm. you until he stabs you in the back. And it's like, wow, that's kind of unusual. Right. So I just thought that was odd that they used the exact same wording for some reason. It's like, uh, so he says this to everybody? Or, or you know, was it a, the whole mm. thing of Ruth? I don't know. And just thinking about it now, do we think Tom ran away because... See, I don't know why Tom sent that... I don't know if he had kind of selfish intentions when he sent the So you think script. he ran away because what? Like, Tom oh set it up? crap, like I know, well I don't know okay, I mean, but now that I'm thinking, it's just a thought that came to yeah, my yeah, mind yeah, now, yeah, sure. like maybe he knew that, oh crap, that you know, what I just did reminds me of what happened with that, like uh -huh. I'm gonna step away because mm -hmm. I feel guilty I don't know, it could be, but yeah, because not. at the, I mean, at the moment, and things change a lot on this show, but at the moment, Tom is really one of the very few stable and noble characters who right. who continues to not backstab anybody and mm -hmm. be who he says he is. Mm -hmm. And so maybe we're getting a little glimpse of him, maybe not being as noble. Some maybe he is doing a little bit of back yeah. backroom dealing. Yeah. Well, yeah, maybe. Especially if he thinks that you know somebody's taking his place. Right. I mean, he's in some protecting fashion. himself. Yeah. yeah, he's protecting his turf or whatever, or making sure that he's not going to be left out in the cold. I don't know. When they so they're getting ready to do the read through, and this is Julia gets the new information and goes in and hears that there could be. Right. Well, they hear from Nikki Blonsky, another. It's not so much a cameo, but she's a right. um, a, re a recurring character. She did hairspray. Yes. Um, so we're certainly going to get to, her, to hear her sing before mm -hmm. the end of her appearances mm -hmm. on the show, which I think will be really fun. So she plays Margot, who's Jerry's assistant, um, and spills that there's another draft, that, that there are other things going on, and, and Julia is surprised by this and finding that there, there's, there are some backroom shenanigans going on. Yeah, right. and right. in that, even that, I was wondering why, you know, I was looking at the reaction of Tom, is like he didn't you know, he was so surprised by everything. But how could you forget that you sent a draft, you know, two right. months prior? That's why it's a yeah. little fishy. Yeah, that's what I'm wondering. Because Julia made a big deal out of it. Right. She she vented to Tom about it. Like, mm -hmm. oh, my gosh, she read another draft. It's probably Peter. Like, oh, mm -hmm. my gosh, do I, should, I, should I still trust him? Should I go through with this read-through? And Tom doesn't say anything about sending the draft over. Yeah. yeah but so mm -hmm. Tom may have thought there was a third could have been, yeah. I mean, she even asked about the whole Elizabeth Taylor thing. Yeah. So, uh, you know, but it was just yeah. fishy that he didn't even fess up for a second yeah. that it might have been this draft. Mm -hmm. Like, he didn't go to uh, Margot and say, uh, which draft was it? Wait a minute, because I sent right. him one, too. Was it, was it that oh, one? Yeah. Right. But maybe be, he thought, oh, well, Julia's going to freak out. Know. She was freaked out anyway. She would have freaked right. out no and, matter what. And all yeah. Tom said was, like, oh, you didn't have the, the Liz Taylor? 
you know, number. Like, it, he was kind of... It was sketchy. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. it was sketch. Right. <laughs> Especially now that we're talking about it, I see it more yeah. sketchy, sketchy than ever. So... But, you know, uh, oh, I just lost what I was going to say. It was about Tom. Well, you hang on to that. But even, even, Go ahead. even, okay, so just before they're going into the read and they have that little thing in the hallway there with, between Peter and Julia, and she mm -hmm. tells you she fires them, I'll get fired. Yep. And, mm -hmm. he, and the whole thing, I, you know, when he was saying, look, you got to trust yourself, I don't know what's going on here, I didn't do it, have anything to do with it. I, I thought that was great because that, what a spot for her to be put in, Julia. And I thought that was great because I, mm -hmm. I felt like she was, well, I, you know, she, she had tried so hard. She tried so hard to have any kind of confidence. Yeah. <laughs> she finally goes away with them and has takes the Peter medication and has self confidence. Right. One, one, two lines from Derek, and boom, she's on. Her, no, forget it. She's mm -hmm. she's back basket case again. So they got her going back and forth, back and forth, rebounding like crazy. And interesting how Tom was very happy when she returned to yes. her basket case self. Well, we always want people to stay the way that right. we think of them. Right. We never want mm -hmm. them to go beyond. Right. Well, I'm I'm glad that she kind of went back and forth because. Because it would have yeah. been so unrealistic for me for her to be all of a sudden yeah. this like pillar of confidence yeah. with everything yes. that she's doing. Yeah, yes. I just find it funny I, the, the parallels between you know the two reads going on at the same time. The parallels for me between Sean Hayes' character, and <laughs> Deborah <laughs> Messi's character, because one is on all the events, and maybe <laughs> Julie ought to be right. <laughs> Exactly. They should do some sharing <laughs> yeah. of meds. So in a way, they were together. <laughs> <All right. laughs> another another thing about Tom and and perhaps him him working the angles a little bit. Yeah. This 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 show opened pretty much with him on stage, tell, you know, explaining to Derek the new number yeah. that he that he's got ready mm -hmm. for this. Which we'll, and we'll talk about the number a little bit later. But, it, you know, it's another thing of him sort of taking control and showing this is what I've got and this is it. And I don't know if I should give the spoiler or not. I know a big spoiler. Though. Well, we kind of saw it in the coming up. Did we? Spoiler alert. Well, all right. Well, I don't, well no, no, I guess we didn't see that part. But we can. Mm -hmm. I think you should talk about that in prediction. Oh, all right. Yeah, well, it's, a, it's an informed prediction. Well, no, you, <laughs> you, you don't have to say it. What you, we could pose the question is my point. So we'll do that later. Okay. All right. But uh, <laughs> it was interesting to see his vision for Marilyn, and clearly Wait she was... Wait for it. It's going to be <laughs> really <Tom's>, good. <laughs> well, Tom's idea of Marilyn was that it, it wasn't about the men in her life. It was about... And he, right. Of course, he says this later, is that you know, how she became this thing, and mm -hmm. she pushed all the energy and stuff like that. Right. So, but I love that opening number. Well, I know we'll talk about that later, but go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, but did anybody else like that scene in the hallway that I was talking about between Peter and Julia? Because I love the way Deborah Messing was playing that. Was she just felt? What options do you have? Where else can you? you she has no inner compass at the no, moment. No, not at all. She's so completely confused. Yeah. yeah right. And then I like that she finally kind of centered herself and said, "No, let's do this. I'm never going to know if I don't." I liked that moment. Yeah. I thought mm -hmm. that was a good build. Right, and it was. It also is sort of sort of shows her resolve to. She needs to figure out where to trust and mm -hmm. whom to trust, and and when she is, you know, rudderless, yeah. what she does know is she has to hear it in order to be able to tell. Which is different from last week when she couldn't even take criticism from these people and all right. this other stuff. She was right. just uh, right. hell bent on not hearing anything. Finally, she's at a point where she can actually wanting to read it, wanting to hear it. So I thought that was right. a good, mm -hmm. good arc, a little mini arc for her. Well, in, in her trying to figure out who to trust, really, um, that was her just trusting herself. It yeah. wasn't really yeah. about, you know, this is Peter thinks I should go with it. Yeah. She took a moment, and that's really what she wanted to do for her own craft, like mm -hmm. to hear it, as you said, mm -hmm. and at least try. And mm -hmm. she, she worked so hard in it anyways. Like, why not? try okay mm -hmm. so and it goes well and of course he peter's been in your trust yourself trust your instincts all that other yeah. stuff so mm -hmm. we, do we still think he's a bad guy do we still think what do we, i'm still he's still uh, fishy yeah. to me still fishy okay yeah. Still yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> he's doesn't fishy, trust but, him at all no I, but i think there's a reason he has come into her life mm -hmm. to be able to show her these things about herself mm -hmm. fishy or not right uh -huh. so what regardless <laughs> of what his intentions are mm -hmm. he he could potentially have a positive, a positive impact on her. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think so. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, you know, one of the things that I wanted to discuss was the dilemma that they are all facing now, which is, is it, uh, you know, it's and it's a kind of the continued artistic dilemma. Mm -hmm. Do I go commercial 
you know, mm -hmm. and do something that's going to, as John puts it, put butts in the seats and sell mm -hmm. tickets? <laughs> or are you going to go with the piece that is, by everyone's assessment, brilliant? Mm -hmm. I mean, that was the quote that they used. They said it's brilliant. Yet too mm -hmm. good for Broadway. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And Jerry cites a bunch of musicals that were too good for Broadway. Right. <laughs> that was hard. It was harsh. But that's reality. And you kind of yeah. listen to it and go, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. But isn't that always the artist's dilemma? Yeah. It's just... You know, it's always going to be that way. Yes, I was going through right. that today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. yeah. Sorry. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it is. And, and the reality is that as brilliant as it is, if nobody sees it, you know, you don't get your next job. The people who are involved don't get their next yeah. jobs and you don't ever get a chance. And it, it's just, it's a crime as an artist, as a creative person. I think it's a crime that 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 is the decision that you so often have to make right. and that a lot of times the two don't come together mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well there's art for art's sake and then there's show business right business, business. Yeah, and that's exactly it's painful but that's that's the reality of it I felt yeah. bad for him. <laughs> I hate having those discussions oh. well and yeah. so in the end they decide to go to Eileen to make the decision which I thought was a very interesting choice didn't mm -hmm. you because because she is sort of the arbiter of all of all the things. She has been with the show from the very beginning. What did you yeah. guys think about that that choice that they made to go to Eileen for the tiebreaker, so to speak? I love that uh, Jack is still so loyal to Eileen, mm -hmm. even though they technically have a new producer who mm -hmm. is Eileen's ex. Mm -hmm. um, he he makes it known to Eileen and to others that she still should be the person who makes the decisions. He says it a few times. You mean Derek, right? Because of oh, the sorry, Jack Derek. Davenport. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I'm sorry. That's, okay. real That's okay. <laughs> I followed. I just want to make Derek, sure everybody else does. Yeah. So Jack, who plays Derek, yeah, Derek yeah. Uh, the character. Um, so, yeah, I love his loyalty to Eileen mm -hmm. throughout the whole thing. Because mm -hmm. he's a very powerful dude. He's, you know, he's the director. So mm -hmm. he, he should have a lot of say. But interesting, he doesn't have any more sway than anybody else in the room in, yeah, within, within was, those few people. I have to say, I thought that was odd. What's that? They're all going to leave choice. it with in, in Eileen's hands. I thought it kind of was because too, here's but Jerry is you know pretty much last week he was he's you know the way they painted it, it looked like he just wanted to move ruin her. her exactly and now he's agreeing to put it in her hands right he's like what how well ex that? except he did say you know that he he knew how talented she was and how good she was right. at what she does but uh, but he also said there's no way I'm producing this I'm going to put butts in the seats and then. To just the next well, thing. And the, right, then give up like, his, right. Think, yeah, it's like, like the what the hell happened? Well, well, I think yeah. it's John, are you it's, throwing it's, the implausible flag? Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I think it's ego, because he mm. did say, well, she's going to agree with me. So he wanted to go and show and prove that she would agree uh, with him. Right. Yeah. All right. Okay, that could be it. I still, I still, but again, I'm basing it on what they showed last week, which is I didn't think he wanted her to have anything to do with this. He, right. he didn't want to go to the reeds for crying out loud. No. Mm -hmm. So I was just wondering why he would even let her to be. That is allow, weird. Allow that to be part. Mm -hmm. well, he wants just a his, question. His control, so, like you know, I, I think again, he just wants to prove that he's he's right, that mm -hmm. she's gonna say. Not to produce it for I, I think that's absolutely plausible. I also think it's if, in order to prove that he's right, he would probably just say, screw that. I'm doing it the way I want. I'm the producer. I mean, that's also yeah. a way to show his control and his power. Yeah. yeah, yeah if he could she go disagrees way. with him. So he can't yeah. lose is what you're saying. Yeah. Well, I'm saying <laughs> you know, if, he, if he really wanted to show that, he would show it by saying, no, she doesn't get to decide. It's my deal. I'm doing it. Yeah. When mm -hmm. um, all, all four of them are in the room staring at Eileen for her answer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, J Derek, he <laughs> says, um, all right, Eileen, it, it all comes down to you, mm -hmm. as it should be. And I was waiting for some huge reaction from Jerry. Yeah. You know, because that was, that's been his, like, vindictive mission this whole time, like, take it away from Eileen. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't really flinch or anything so I was like oh, that's, that's I think they just did that lacking agree. some <laughs> reaction there agree. <laughs> yeah. and and I, 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 I think, well I think that's but I think Kendra's <laughs> argument is, is very plausible I just didn't I was like it was just a stretch for me to hang on to yeah mm -hmm. but I agree. It, it makes for a great you know bit I mean because obviously she's about to say something then we cut so you know right uh, oh you know so that, know. that was a wonderful build-up but I, I yeah. was like, we still have time. We still have time. Yeah, and yeah. Then yeah. It was no, a long sorry, pause. cliffhanger. <laughs> <laughs>
Man. <laughs> Which, and, we, you know, we just before we went on the air, you read a, a Facebook message, oh, I think, yeah. that we, we won't really repeat. No. But, you know, p sometimes those types of cliffhangers and, and the, the types of trifling that they sometimes do on the show with fans makes us crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Instead of keeping yeah. us interested, it, yeah. And I think they're, I think, you know, they're having a little trouble with uh, walking that line because yeah. the, the Facebook message that you read was uh, not complimentary, shall we say? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's a they risk. I mean, critical. you got to give them credit for yeah, trying it just because it's a risk. You know that you know when you do one of those, you, people, some people are gonna go, oh, oh, that's great. I can't, mm -hmm. can't they got me. I'm so can't wait to see <laughs> next week. Right. Other people are gonna, well, oh, really? How manipulative? And so <laughs> yes. When but you do I, something like that, you know you're gonna get. Well, and story I mean, storytelling is manipulative. Yes. You know, I mean, we were trying to get people to feel things when when people write things and tell stories, but um, but it, it's a fine line, and of course, people are going to be. Not everyone is going to agree. Right. With well, the, I think the both sides driving. will tune in. Yeah, they'll both be yeah. like, well, let yeah. me just see what happens. You'd yeah. rather yeah. that than yeah. have everybody go. Hey, that was great. Right, exactly. <laughs> Don't do that. It's late, John, and you're going to make us all young. Sorry. I know. It's contagious. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the Karen and Jimmy story that also involves Kyle a little bit. Uh -huh. First thing I want to say is, uh, you know, I'll throw the implausible flag here. No, oh. What is the deal with Jimmy all of a sudden being a human being? <laughs> <laughs> He's been an big turn, a character very and a jackass for four episodes, and all of a sudden he speaks to people like they're human, he's he makes eye contact with them. <laughs> he's concerned about what they're thinking and what they're feeling. Maybe he's back on his mat. Yeah, Maybe he is. <laughs> he's been hanging out with Terry. Yeah. I, that, that just irritated the heck out of me. And I was like, okay, so here we've got Jimmy not being an a-hole. What's that about? <laughs> right? I don't know. I, you know, you know, he, they they try to deal with it by him saying he just doesn't like people and all of a sudden I guess now that he does he can open May up to them or something. I don't maybe know. now that he's getting some loving from that blonde. Oh yeah. hello. <laughs> Trampy hey. blonde Bunk. who was just showing her territory and I mean <laughs> territory. No. Uh, he's <laughs> loosening get, get, up. Get, 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 get. <laughs> wow. oh, oh, where did that come from? <laughs> oh, that's Mr. Lemieux. Mr. Lemieux. Mr. Lemieux, giving us some sound effects. <laughs> so she's, uh, Karen is obviously smitten with him. Which, and, okay, yes, well, okay, Kendra, Kendra, tell it. No, I don't understand where that came from. All of a sudden she's head over heels. And it's he's not, an it's not awesome like a, kisser, yeah. apparently. Well, yeah, he's, well, he's hot, think he's talented, and he kissed her. Isn't it rebound? Of course it's rebound. For who? For her? Karen, yeah. Of course. Because it's not a... It can't be... A no. serious See, thing? Yeah. You don't think so? I don't See, think but, so. Cause but that's why people have rebounds. Even if it's no, a rebound, it, when you're when you're in the rebound, you actually feel those things. Yes. Mm -hmm. And maybe yeah. even oh, more amplified because... <laughs> <laughs> no, really? it's, it's more no. Am amplified because you're vulnerable. Right. Mm -hmm. So you kind of cling on to the first good feeling you get from someone. Right. Okay. Not um, it, it might not <laughs> last, you know, it, it might not last, but while you're in it... But that's interesting. It, it kind of feels good. So you say you're not into... Is that because you, you, you like Karen and you don't want her to make yes. this stupid mistake yes. and you think he's not right for her, all that kind of well, stuff? Well, I like Karen. I think I just also... I just don't like that story. Line, okay. That, that choice. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Because of his character, or do you just? I'm just curious. I, mean, I don't trust him. Right. But, but I don't think she's over Dev, and I think she needs to focus on, you know, the uh, her job. Right. Well, and so. her, you know, if things go the way they're supposed to, her life is going to change mm -hmm. very dramatically mm -hmm. as soon as this show opens. And, uh, you know, her having a new relationship, and it, obviously it was part of the downfall of her other relatively stable relationship. So mm -hmm. this is, it, you know, destined for, destined for tragedy anyway, no matter yeah. how you cut it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what it looks like to me. But there could be some really hot sex and some great... Whoa, um, hey, whoa! Some really great... <laughs> giggity, giggity, goo! <laughs> some really great uh, duets that happen oh, out yeah. of it. Yeah, some, you know? some music <laughs> in the... Okay, well. I'll stop. Well, <laughs> no, that, anyway. Some tender moments. <laughs> oh, there you go. I, oh, forgot I forgot about the tender <laughs> moments. The buzzword. After yes. Buzz TV, tender <laughs> moments. Tender moments. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag. Um, but it wasn't even that tender with Dev. I don't, it, mm -hmm. that's what I mean. It just seemed implausible that okay. she would be so. Head over uh, heels so over, quickly. For this guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 
Mm -hmm. I mean, unless so he was I, just one heck of a kisser, that just... Yeah, mm -hmm. he's really a good kisser. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> when didn't, he, it when didn't he's high. It didn't translate through the screen. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You remember the kiss? Uh, it yes. It was awkward and... It wasn't. No, of, I'm of just. That I'm song. kidding. That no, it's it. It wasn't. But you know, she's an actress. She has feelings. Maybe uh, she's. <laughs> maybe she's sorry. just really Feel excited it. about it. I, yeah. I, I, I think she's just and, really still vulnerable. And mm -hmm. well, and also she could very well. And I, I'm sure this is part of it. She's very well attracted to his talent. And, you know, the, and no, I mean it without finger quotes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's an artist being attracted to an artist, you know? Right. So he, when, he's, when he's expressing himself through his music, that speaks to her because she's a, a singer and an actress. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so mm -hmm. she's very, that sort of hits her in, in her tender place. <laughs> <laughs> Is that good thing, by the way? Good curious. thing we're in the midnight time <laughs> slot here. This is the rated X time slot. Wow. But so, okay, <laughs> I, I want to I want to continue hours. with this storyline and talk about that. Um, so the reading goes poorly. They determine that the problem Ooh. is the book. Yeah. That Kyle can't put three sentences together <laughs> and make it cohesive. That was Poor guy. And, yeah. Right. It was sad. Yeah. Because he's the one that's really believing in the project, yeah. and even when uh, Jimmy was still an a-hole, he was right? the one still trying to connect yeah. or keep right? in contact with yeah. Karen and yeah. keep it moving. Yeah, he's the one that kept it going. Yeah. And... <laughs> And it, it is kind of sad, you know, because yeah. you, you want him to actually have some. It's like uh, William Hung on American Idol. <laughs> right. Aww. Right. Aww. Aww. See? Aww. But at least Poor he guy. has Jimmy's music. Yeah. <laughs> right. And even their answer isn't really satisfied. Well, it is, I guess, you know, they're going to turn it into a, you know, like a, like a rent type uh, musical. But yeah. and J it's Jell Kyle's story. <laughs> which would be, which would be, I believe the, I believe the term is would be an operetta. Yeah. In that like case, that. so um, you know, a modern operetta, like what they sure. did with um, the Bill. Like the There's yeah, William Hunt. There he is, William Hunt. Thank you very much, Mr. Lemieux. All right. What they did with uh, Billy Joel's musical, Moving right. On. Moving on. Or moving out. Moving, moving out. out. Sorry. Okay. Anyway, so th it's that that idea of, of stringing together songs right. with a through line, but not necessarily having a book to go with it. Like a very long cabaret. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the, not you know, the musical, well, like an opera. I mean, no, like, like a an cabaret opera. show. <laughs> like an opera. So that the, the, yeah. the it's the the ideas are conveyed through mm. no, the song. Like so okay, so we're we're on the roof. Uh, looking over, you know, the New York City and deciding that Jimmy's words are not good. Mm -hmm. Everyone's sort of dejected about it. And then there's a moment between uh, Karen and Jimmy where it seems like she's, you know, wanting to talk to him about things and he he walks away and sort of rejects her and goes, you know, that's really good that we're just being professional. Yeah, and yeah. your situation. Because of your right. situation, and we were all like, "What situation? What's it? Mm -hmm. What's your situation?" Mm -hmm. And we, or I assumed it was uh, Deb. her breakup. Mm -hmm. Her breakup. And then we find out Kyle is working it. <laughs> <laughs> so you think he? Did, How dare so you? You, so you guys think he did it on purpose to keep them apart? Oh or yeah. You, yeah. Kyle is in love with Jimmy. Yes. Even though they're family, with quotes. Right. Um, it's obvious that Kyle has a huge crush or something on Jimmy. Right. And he's trying okay. to prevent uh, Jimmy from finding someone else other than the blonde. Yeah, <laughs> right? that's what I'm saying. Or, I'm or going, a more okay, serious relationship. So, okay, so the, the blonde wasn't a big threat because she she's just a, a fling and therefore... <laughs> But Karen is a threat because it could be a legitimate. Well, is that I think what there's saying? that, but I also think that Kyle has established a relationship with Karen that sure. he kind of doesn't want Jimmy involved in. Okay. Mm. So they're, they're, he's trying to keep them apart for a whole host of reasons. I, I honestly, I, I just bought that Derek always has an affair with his leading lady. So I went, yeah, okay, that's pretty much true, and it's pretty well known. <laughs> it so is true. I, yeah. I, I didn't see he was working it. I thought he was just being honest about it. Mm -hmm. But you, so you guys think it's not just honest? Do you think he's yeah. under? He's trying to do that to? Because he knows she's not having a relationship. He does with, know that? With Derek. How does he know that? I'm pretty sure he knows. Okay, see, I, I thought that was an assumption. I, 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 I don't know that. He, I didn't know that. He sees the eyes uh, Jimmy and Karen make with each other. Yes, he definitely he, does. He keeps walking mm -hmm. in on that. So right. I think he's trying to sabotage. 
Right. So what's it going to Well, I believe gonna, it. I'm just saying. I didn't see it in that moment. In that moment, well, it just looked like to me it was just saying. episode when they were at the piano together, mm -hmm. um, yeah. do you remember that? They were yeah, no, no. connected, and then Kyle saw. And no, I believe all that, and I agree with all that. I'm not saying he didn't. I'm just saying in that moment, it just looked like he was just, it just looked like a throwaway line. It didn't mm. look like he was, it, it, it was no nod to him actually playing anything. So I just went, oh. Mm. And, and it's a true line. I mean, I think everybody knows that Derek yes, has a Derek does have a right. So I didn't, I didn't see it as a machination. I just thought it was a real line. Well, but right. I, I completely agree with you that he would say that because of how they've shown uh, what Kyle thinks of. Well, <laughs> and that the initial conversation was off camera, so we didn't see what he said to him. Right. He came and up, we don't know how he said it. Right, it was Jimmy a follow-up, sure? exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we don't know the extent of the yeah. shenanigans. Mm -hmm. So what do you think <laughs> it gets Kyle by by creating this rift between them, or at least keeping them apart. I mean, does he benefit, or is he is he sabotaging himself? Do you think? He's he's getting ready to seduce Jimmy. Maybe. <laughs> I'm just that was random. Tender I know. Moments. <laughs> um, what do you think? Do you well, think it benefits Jimmy to do that? Well, I mean, I really, Kyle to do that. I really like your point though that you made about. Uh, J uh, Kyle developing his own relationship with Karen mm -hmm. and Derek, and that's you know his dream too. Mm -hmm. um, him not wanting to complicate mm -hmm. that new professional network he's creating or whatever with maybe Jimmy might mess it up if they get into a romance because I'm guessing you he's know, been there when Jimmy's messed it up before. Yeah, so. right. I mean, it sounds it sounds like it. So maybe he doesn't want to take that risk. Mm -hmm. I thought that was he a good point. He doesn't want to walk in on them anymore. <laughs> yeah, that, you know, and that, yeah, and happened. that too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. All right, let's talk music. <laughs> let's talk music. Okay, so the first song that we saw was called Public Relations. It's one of the original pieces written by Mark Shaman and Scott Whitman, um, and it was the big production number. I have to say, one of the lines that I loved was, and it was fast, it was yeah. moving, it was fun. I really enjoyed it. Uh, but one of the lines I really loved was America's smartest dumb, dumb blonde. That's what I wrote down too. Yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Because she was she was clearly brilliant in her in her particular way at manipulating, well, manipulating people. Manipulating the and press. That's what we talk about. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Public mm -hmm. opinion. Yeah, she was great at that. I like that too. I I also like there's like a play on uh, words on in a phrase. Uh, sh they said something. She said something like. I've got a problem being alone with one man, but I have no problem with public relations. Mm -hmm. And it's right. like PR and, you know, mm -hmm. whatever other public relations she's having. Yes. Oh, there here it comes. Go. Oh, good. Thank, Thank you, you Steven. Steven. It felt it, it felt nice to have a full on production number we again. Had one. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Because we've and just well been staged. getting small sections of yeah. songs and, and this one was the whole thing. And yeah. they really did it up. They even did the Zigfield Follies the, kind of the overhead Buzzy shot. shot. Or Buzzy yeah. Berkeley, Berkeley, that's shot. the one I meant. Thank you. I was gonna yeah. ask you and I should have asked you off camera so I didn't get Sorry. that wrong. <laughs> Busby Berkeley and and you know, all of the, the costumes, there was a little yeah. bit of soft shoe, oh, there was great. everything in it and, and we haven't seen it in so long and I was yeah. so happy and uh, even Tom playing all those multiple characters yes so was, I really yeah, like that very well staged and it was great the blocking was wonderful and everything mm -hmm. was great. good Kendra, choreography I enjoyed any it. opinions on it um I mean I enjoyed it I and I had missed those big productions mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. um yeah it was it was good <laughs> so then we had um some boys which is a death cab for cutie song also sung by Karen mm -hmm. oh that thoughts but that was the one, the one that uh, she, she sang to Kyle to while he was doing Jimmy? the dishes. I mean, Jimmy, Jimmy while yeah. he was doing the dishes around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cleaning up and everything. You did not, you did not, you did not respond to that, that one, did you? <laughs> no. Tell us what you thought. Why? Yeah, I articulate. Didn't, I didn't hear. What? Oh no! I mean, I just—it's that same relationship that I. I oh, just, that. I don't, okay. I don't see how she's so head over heels yeah. and singing to him, and you know, it just it pining did, it away. Did, and yeah, I didn't connect with that one. Was it the song or was it? No, I love the song actually, and her voice is okay. beautiful. But I think just it is it just it, it's part of that. The whole, piece I didn't work the same because thing. of your. You know, the yeah. song is great. She sung it very well and all that other stuff. But I wasn't connected to it at all because I'm just going, really? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you mean I yeah, I can't see what she I, sees in this I guy. See I, what you're I get the fact yeah. that that she sees his talent. I understand all that. I still just go, I don't care if he's that talented. Are you kidding me? The guy's a schmuck. 
I, I'm out. I get I'm out. what you guys are saying, but like how many times in our real lives do you have a girlfriend that you say the same thing to you? Like, I can't believe you're right. so into this guy. Oh, I, I agree <laughs> right. that it's real and it happens all the time, but I, in real life I go, what are you thinking? Right. right. It's, it's like time. somebody needs to tell her. And yeah. thank God for her roommate who at least tells right. Jimmy, like, yeah, exactly. stop messing with my roommate. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wait, didn't he even say, really? Like, what am I doing? I don't think he re realized that she's, you know, so into him. Yeah. Mm hmm. No. Yeah, he's a great you. kisser, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the other piece that we saw that I think is going to come up later, I don't, you know, was the piece that Jimmy sang. Um, yeah. That sa uh, there was a, something about after the fire, there was something called Caught in the Storm. I think maybe Caught in the Storm might have been the title of the piece. I believe so, yeah. That was at the read. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. I really like his voice, yeah. and I'm really looking forward to hearing it as we get further into the hit list uh, as it develops into a musical. Did you guys have any thoughts on that little bit of music? He's. I mean, he, he's been good every single time he's mm -hmm. opened his mouth to sing. Mm -hmm. To sing. To sing. Right. <laughs> exactly. Oh he's gosh. such a talented guy. Yeah, he's. Good. I loved it. I liked his voice. I thought it was the way he did it. I loved that the whole approach and that. There we go. He's not very like Broadway musical style. He's very modern, um, like radio like, yeah. type of singer. I can see him for with me. an album too. Yeah. Right. This is not. Jimmy. I'm not sure what that. It's not Jimmy <laughs> singing, but I, it's he pretty. He sounds like Karen. Yeah, oh, she sounds good. <laughs> yeah, she yeah. sounds good. Um, anything else anybody wants to mention, or should we just move into news and I'm gossip? To remember, I have to do. Buzz TV News. Uh, I have a little news. Um, Megan Hilty went to go see Cinderella on Broadway. The opening night happened um, on Sunday in New York City. And she tweeted, Cinderella on Broadway is spectacular. Congrats to the whole cast for a musical opening night. I saw previews of this show. I'm mm. so excited in uh, Seattle last oh, year. Right. And it's based on the television Rodgers and Hammerstein television version of Cinderella that that first aired in I can't remember now but it was I something like that, yeah. 1955 or 63 mm. or something like that and it, it ran every Christmas for 40 years or something yeah. like that and so if you remember it you will know some of the songs from it it well, was they, they also did a, a remake uh, Rodgers and Hammerstein yeah. Cinderella remake um, maybe like a decade ago okay um, with Brandy. Yep. Yes, that's right. That's right. So you will definitely know some of the songs. It was spectacular in previous, and I'm sure it's even more spectacular on Broadway. And nice to see that Megan Hilty was there. Also, um, Angelica Houston was there, uh, Bernadette Peters, a whole bunch of, of other people from Broadway supporting that new opening show. So that was exciting. Cool. There's a picture of Megan Hilty shooting a scene on the streets of New York City where she's got a pretty little, I don't know why these printed in black and white, but a pretty little red dress and her long johns sticking out <laughs> underneath. <laughs> Are uh, those uh, those are Spanx? No, it's no, Long it's John's because they were talking oh. about how cold, cold, cold it was, oh, and, you, oh, okay. and yeah, and how her uh, every once in a while the wind would come blow up her dress, and you could see her <laughs> Long John's Maryland out from style. Wind. It was very cute. Um, she also told recently told Emmy magazine that she panicked prior to shooting one of the production numbers early on in the first season. She said, "I called my manager and said I'm not the right person for this. Save me the humiliation." <laughs> and wow. um, and she said, I've done a million readings and been told you're wonderful, we love you, but we need a star in the part. But luckily she preserved her performances on the show and they have launched her to her greatest fame to date. Hmm. So luckily she did not walk out on that yeah. show. Is this the right picture? Can't see it. Here it comes. You're awesome, Steven. Uh, yeah, you're quick. We can't see it in here. One sec, I'm wondering okay. what's going on. Should I go into Yeah, why don't you go ahead to your news? Well, and then we'll Kristen talk. isn't with us, but she sent us some news. Oh, did she? <laughs> That's right. so sweet of her. Uh, Thank you, yeah. Kristen. So Jeremy Jordan, who plays Jimmy, mm -hmm. uh, scored a film deal starring opposite Anna Kendrick in oh. the film adaptation of the 2001 musical The Last Five Years. Mm. Um, it's about the relationship between a novelist and a struggling actress. The project is directed by Richard Legravenis uh, from P.S. I Love You. 
Um, told with Jordan's side of the story chronologically and Kendrick's in reverse order. Mm. So that'll be an oh, interesting. Oh, uh, interesting. That sounds good. Um, she also mentioned the Facebook contest. There's a, a contest to win a trip to meet the Smash cast in New York City. Uh, with Broadway show tickets and and et cetera. Nice. Is it on the it's on the Facebook? It's on right? Facebook. Yeah, if you go cool. to Facebook and like their page, um, you can find out more information. That's cool. Um, and then lastly, she just talked about Nikki Blonsky um, that she'll be in for a few episodes. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we'll yes. for sure get to see her sing. And we yes. also know that uh, Rosie O'Donnell is going to be on the finale episode of the season. She's going to be. Uh, hosting the Tony Awards oh. in, the, in the episode. <laughs> nice. Well, ob so obviously, if they're doing a Tony Awards on the show, then some of these, somebody's, somebody's going to get nominated. Yeah. And Somebody, there'll probably so. be several against each other so they can show well. the audience. Mm. So last finale, <laughs> last season's finale was the opening night, and so this season's finale will be the Tony Awards. So that's, mm -hmm. that's pretty exciting. That's good. Mm. Mm. Yeah. All right, I think we should move on. Oh, do you have more? Oh, no. Let's move on to predictions. Um, that picture, is it a like a red flower red dress? Red and white flower dress, Next yeah. to a car, right? Yeah. We're showing it on the screen now. Oh, okay, excellent. Oh. But yeah. So there it is, you can see her little long john sticking out underneath <laughs> on her on her knees. Because it was cold that day. Poor girl needed a little extra, little extra coverage. She's so cute. <laughs> you don't want to be shivering. Let's move to predictions. All right. There we go. <laughs> and now, your After Buzz TV prediction. I'm going to go with mine right off because I've teased it already, and it's an informed prediction, which just well, well, means... Well, before you actually say it, let's ask what people think. Oh, okay, okay, because, you Well, because okay. Derek looks like he's quitting. Right, mm -hmm. right. So who would take over directing? Tom. Jimmy. Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> Directing bombshell? <laughs> yeah, I, that was, that again, was just another being funny. Random. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, Peter? Oh no, Tom. Yeah. So that's what's going to happen. That's exactly. Tom right. is going Tom. to be directing <gasps> bombshell on Broadway, which also was kind of foreshadowed by right. him doing that opening number and doing mm -hmm. the standing on stage picture, picture yeah. this, that kind yeah. of thing. So, yeah. um, so, and I think that that, you know, I think that's going to create. Challenges. It's going to be it's great going to create conflict for him. Julia and he. I mean, first yes. of all, he doesn't like. He, he wants a different vision of Maryland. So yes. mm -hmm. this is going to be great. I think Those it's going to be good yeah. TV. They were yeah. really two peas in a pod. They were really tight together. Now they're going to be at odds. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. A lot of drama. With also just another kind of general prediction that I think we're going to finally get some more numbers. We, mm -hmm. They've been a little stingy on the songs. Mm -hmm. um, I was looking back season one, they would do sometimes five songs mm -hmm. in yeah. an episode. Mm -hmm. And we've had, you know, two and a fifth songs in this episode. <laughs> um, only one of them being a production number. And maybe they're tired because I know it's very difficult to do yeah. what they're doing there. But we love the music. And so I, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm sending out a prediction in the hopes that we will get more music <laughs> as we go into the season. Uh, predictions, John? Tom. Tom. I think it's going to be Tom. <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> Kendra, any predictions? I was yelling at the screen when Eileen was about to say something. Yes. Yeah. I think she's going to choose both and maybe kind of try to do, do a hybrid. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be the a mess. Mm. So. <laughs> or not. No, it's a mess. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. a good idea. Sarah? Uh, I think Kyle's going to get his heart broken by yeah. uh, Karen and Jimmy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I second. That's a gimme. Aww. There's yeah. There's no way he can't. And yeah, exactly. the fact broken. that he can't write and he's <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, his dreams are exactly. already, his dreams are already dashed. He might as well not have a love life too. Exactly. There's nothing to live for anymore. Exactly. No. Tell us where we can find you, Sarah. You can find me on Twitter at Sarah with an H Mendoza. Kendra, at Kendra with a K and then K A B A S E L E. <laughs> on the Twitter. <laughs> John, you have some news for us here. Uh, well, you can find me on the big screen starting Friday, March oh. 8th in selected theaters around the country. If you're in New York, uh, Los Angeles, Chicago, San Francisco, what's our other one? Boston. Boston, thank you very much. Uh, as for our uh, big release of 
Adventures of Serial Buddies, a hilarious Yay! new killer serial killer buddy comedy, is produced uh, by our own AfterBuzz TV CEOs Kevin Undergaro and Maria Menounos. Stars uh, two broke girls, Beth Bears. It's got Kathy Lee Gifford in it, Artie Lang, Christopher Lloyd, Chris McDonald. Who else is it going to? Oh, Maria Menounos is also in it. Henry Winkler narrates it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you're in it. I am in it in, in a couple of roles. Let's see, what, what else can and we say? It about? is awesome. Oh, yeah, Sarah's actually seen it, so thank you. I very did much the for costumes. That on the casting. So, uh, go to that uh, adventure serial. What are Adventures we going to? Adventures of serial Thank you very much for helping <laughs> me out with that. <laughs> to find out show times, also how to buy tickets. Yes. Um, but it's it opens this Friday, and you can see it all weekend. See it every day, Friday, Saturday, there and Sunday. Go. We're Absolutely. gonna. And some of the selected um, cities will have Maria will be there yeah. in some cities, and uh, some of the actors and performers in the show, and some of the crew. So uh, go see Serial Buddies. It's going to be a fun fun weekend for us. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Tamara Berg. Uh, also, my website is TamaraCentral.com. Stephen, where can we find you? You can find me right here at AfterBuzz TV, or you can check my photography out at Facebook.com slash SR Lemieux photo. photo uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> well, we will see you all. Thanks for joining us, and we will see you next week for Smash. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. Watch Serial Buddies. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.